learners or our struggling readers if we do that vocabulary in the context of an investigation. Many things in science uh, have a, a concept, whereas they're not an object, they're not a physical thing that you can name. It's something you have to see or experience to understand. And so that's why it makes the investigation so much more important for them to see the vocabulary in that context or afterwards when they need that name. So if we wanted to go through as uh, Lynn was calling out our name it, verb it, finish it, the level we're talking about at kinder is gonna be much more simplistic of course and we're looking at what would students do in a discussion. So we would wanna know, you know what's the topic? That's really what our, um, where to go. It's really what our writing standard is really looking at. Those students have to be able to dictate, draw, or write the topic and then state their opinion. We could take it a bit further and, and have, them, have them say why as well, but that's really not necessary until second grade. But it's really what is it, that name of it, and then what they're doing. You know, do they like it? Do they not like it? What have you? And so if we were to take a look at just another example that I put in here from Danielle, okay, we would ask students to take a look at um, this particular fellow, okay, um, what is it we're looking at? Are we looking at the polar bear or are we looking at the salmon? Okay, so we got to kind of decide that part. Um, the reason we've pulled this in is this isn't a, a picture out of some of the curricula that some of you might be using, but we also have live webcams. The zoos have tons of live webcams available. Uh, not only are they live, but they also archive some of the video so that your students would be able to watch that right then and there and be able to generate those questions and those thoughts just as we were doing with the snails. So here we would wanna name it. What is this? It's a bear. Well, what kind of bear? It's a polar bear. We wanna be able to then give the verb. What's the polar bear doing? Okay. Um, he's eating, he's catching, um, you know, what is he catching? Finish that. Uh, he's catching a fish, he's eating a fish, or it could be um, he's hunting. You know, we could come up with a wide variety of verbs that really get into details for the kids to get much deeper in it. We can do this verbally. We can do this through sentence frames. I have my sentence frames, my pocket chart's not showing up. <laughs> so I would want to have my sentence frames available for my students to be able for them to use or for us to use through interactive writing or through shared writing. And we would be able to be talking about some of these words that we would want the students to be able to use, to copy, to trace, or to draw. We've been taking, um, in my district, we've been taking a lot of uh, our science pieces, uh, be they resources such as live webcams or things like mystery science, and we've been turning them into interactive seesaws, where you take seesaw, you can use it for free, one slide. The students can record their thoughts asynchronously. The students can provide a drawing asynchronously. So even if you're not there to do this in a synchronous format, it gives you that opportunity to have the students focus on, name it, what is it doing, and then finish it off. And so they can draw it, they can record it, they can photograph it, all those opportunities are there. So I'd like you to please try that, name it, verb it, finish it with, let's use this one here, okay? So do we still have chat? available on there yes we we do have a chat so they can and if you could monitor chat that would be great yes i'm going to monitor the chat thank you i'd like you to please write a sentence using name it verb it finish it and you can use my sentence frame right here if you'd like to use that sentence frame and if you could type into the chat name it what's it doing and then you can finish that off a little bit with some of the things that you see. So you could do, I see, you could start with the actual animal or creature if you like. So you have different options for how you'd like to write today. 
So Diana is sharing, I see the bee is tasting the purple flower. Okay, so we've got name it. Shared, it good. Oh, Go ahead. Hen Henry shared, I see a bee on a flower. Mm -hmm. Alyssa, I see a bee on a purple flower. Pam, the bee landed on a purple flower. Okay, so we've got a lot of really nice ones. So some of you told me that there's, that's a bee. I like that, that that's, a, that's a honey bee. And um, I love the fact you added the detail of it being a purple flower. Uh, this one is the thistle, if you wanted to add that. And I'd like to know, what, what do you think the bee is doing? What do you think the bee is doing? Somebody said the bee landed. Somebody said the bee is tasting. So I want you to look at your, at your writing. And did you tell me what the bee's doing? So now we're, we're getting into, again, revising that writing, or all of those could be listed up on the board. Um, I have given you some vocabulary words that perhaps you might want to use. We would be writing those down, of course, uh, that this is a honeybee, that this is a thistle. So these are different words that may be popping up in a story that we're going to visit next. Um, that you want to use, that you want to know. Maybe it came up in our questions, what kind of flowers uh, you know, do these land on? Let's try it again, another one. We wanna use name it, verb it, finish it. So let's start this time with taking away I see. We're working towards that by third grade, but you know, some of the kids, you might want that topic to be just what, you know, that actual object that they're seeing. So let's try this one and let's again, Verb, what is it doing? And then finish it off. Tell me some details to it. And while you're doing that, um, Deborah did add a little more detail to her bee one. I see the bee sucking nectar from the purple flower. Thank you. Okay, Diana added a caterpillar is eating a small green leaf. Of name it, verb it, finish it. Thank you. Henry, the bug is on a leaf. Okay. Doreen, I see a colorful caterpillar chewing on the green plant. Okay, so we're starting to get into that that more descriptive writing, and that's that's one of the things about science when the kids are actually engaged in it is it can lend itself to these these the observational informational texts very readily um, but the kids can then quickly take it into a narrative piece or you can bring in text tapping uh, such as the very hungry caterpillar this would be a great transition after you're watching videos of this uh, this is actually a monarch caterpillar um, eating milkweed and so we could feed some more vocabulary in there if you wanted to get more detailed. Uh, maybe your kids get to raise these and watch them as they, they create their chrysalis and emerge uh, and, and turn into these butterflies you know, in the spring. So there are so many different routes that you could take this, informative and narrative. And as we saw earlier, what Lynn and Exploratorium showed us so nicely, the argument piece. It really engages kids in there. Um, we have found that with our EL learners, it provides them not only the supports, but the desire to want to share what they're thinking. Because we're feeding them the vocabulary through their experiences, it really grounds it in comprehensible input and in a, a concrete fashion that makes them glom on to those tier three words that otherwise often get lost for our EL learners. So I'm going to go over here, Ooh, not there. May I share really quickly? Yes, thank you, Danielle. Let me- So the more often this type of activity is done and the more often the students are able to verbalize their observations, the better their writing is going to be. And they thrive off of sharing their knowledge with each other, especially kindergartners. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to unshare now. Okay. And Henry added, it provides a support to content of the sight words. 
or context of the sight words. Yes, yes, that's very, yes. Um, can we, there, we're such a small group, can we just go ahead and unmute? And I'd like to know um, what you're thinking about grounding ELA into science first. I'd like to know what you feel advantages for some of your learners might be. So if we could just go ahead and unmute and share some of your thoughts on that, that would be marvelous. For myself, I think I'm actually kind of going the other direction. I'm putting the science into the ELA because I'm make, if my students say that they like something or whatever it is that they think, I tell them you have to have a reason why to support your opinion or your thought. So they have, so that they're already learning that they, they, they finish with because and a reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. so you're saying, I hear you saying that you're, you're having them read and then, um, linking it in science than giving the reason well it's not it's not even reading it's anything we do even when we're talking about math or what, whatever the subject is if they say you know like for example this morning we were comparing numbers and they had to pick two numbers and compare and so for example if a child says oh you know i chose the numbers five and nine and one would say nine is you know, is more than five, I would ask them, well, why? How do you know that? And they would say, well, I know five is nine, is, is more than nine because it comes after five. And that, so that I'm already prepping them for that to be able to say because and the reason why they know something or think something or believe something, and that they're already doing that. And I'm already making them answer in complete sentences as well. So um, I started that from the first day of school, basically. <laughs> if, they can, if they can say it, they can write it. And right, and that's, that's exactly what, you know, I, I believe as well, and that's what research, research seems to be stating. So I've been doing that, and now I, now I still have children. I have to basically feed word for word the sentence frame, you know, or even they'll say something, and then I have to correct it and tell them, say this, and then they repeat after me. But then I have students that can turn questions or can answer in their own words in complete sentences right now. So you know, the first trimester is not even over with. So I, I'm you know, hoping it continues on that pathway. That, that evidence that you're speaking of is, is critical throughout all of our standards, history, social studies, science, all of it. Um, it the, the fact that we can capture students with science so strongly and create that desire for them to want to use those sentence frames is something we really want to capitalize on. Thank you for sharing. Other thoughts? Other people chiming in? I like uh, what Deborah said uh, because she's able to actually include differentiation in the specific structure. You're having uh, readers that are very much ahead than others, but at the same time, these specific tools allows you to actually provide uh, additional, let's say, context for other kids to reach the same level of understanding and the logic behind it. So uh, I, I, I'm so glad to hear that, uh, uh, that you bring into the specific discussion, Deborah. Thank you. And I, one thing I've noticed with some of my students is I have some that are very, very low, but because I've been using this, the, I notice their confidence has improved. They may still be academically be significantly behind their, some of their classmates, but they have much more confidence because when they share, they actually can communicate. You know, they can share their thoughts in that, even though they may not you know, be a, a good reader or, or may struggle in math, but uh, they, they, I've noticed their confidence level has really increased since the beginning of the year. Yeah, those sentence frame supports are really critical, and, and when they're when they're searching for that vocabulary word and they really want to use it and you give it to them at just the right time, that's, that's perfect. Mm. Um, and, and I make them work for it too, because even this morning when we were um, asking, I was asking them some questions about math, trying to get them to, to think about what they've learned and to basically introduce or to front load the, the next lesson without me actually giving them the vocabulary. It, it took a while, but they got where they needed them to be. So I think I think one of the things that um, having an investigation like the one that the Exploratorium uh, just gave them is it, it does help promote those students to move along in, in, in what they need to do. 
So what, what we really want to do is have you try to focus on that, name it, verb it, finish it in your class. Um, anybody feeling like they're going to go try to find some snails? Or... <laughs> yeah, Doreen, you up for it? What do you uh, maybe some snakes? I don't know. We're out in the desert. <laughs> See, that, that's, that's perfect. I know that we, I could very easily grab a few lizards from outside my house right now. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Pet mice, you know, whatever, whatever the kids have. And with our younger kids, they, they really need to be taught um, difference between observation and inference. We would not be asking TK or K to do inferences yet, but they will take a look at their guinea pig climbing up the side of the cage. And rather than say, I see the guinea pig climbing up the side of the cage, they say, I see the guinea pig trying to get out. Mm -hmm. And that's an inference. You're assuming something. And so we have to, one of the things to really push upon them is to say, what do you see? What's the behavior they're engaging in? What are they doing? And so that's part of that discussion is then taking it and saying, now, what do you think that means? But that observation is the key point that we're hoping that you will spend some time with us as we develop along this pathway of integrating um, ELA and science more deeply.